Hey guys, welcome back to Grumpy's Great Outdoors. You know, I know a lot of you guys got Weber kettles for Christmas, or you've had one for a couple of years, maybe even a few years now, but some of you got one on the back porch there, in the corner, or on the side of the house, beside the heat pumps, got one broken leg, and it's got all rusted out on the bottom, and every time you try to use it, and you roll it around, and rickety, rickety, rickety. Boys and girls, it's time to step your game up. It's time we go big time. It's time to go Tomahawk. Yep guys, it's time for the tomahawk. We have a three pound prime grade tomahawk ribeye here. We're gonna put some coarse kosher salt on it, some 16 mesh pepper, which just means more coarse pepper than your table pepper. We're gonna put it in the fridge overnight, let it dry brine that way so we get that good salt down in it. It's a thick piece of meat. We're gonna get it covered really good with the salt and pepper. Let it dry brine, really get into the meat and let that flavor get down in there. Come back tomorrow, put it on a lever kettle. We're gonna reverse sear this, this steak and then we'll show you how we did. All right, guys, here we go with this coarse kosher salt. Now, I'm going to coat it pretty good, like I said. And if you're not used to salt and meat like this, you may be surprised how much we're going to have on here. But this is a big, heavy, thick piece of meat, and it could take a lot of a lot of salt on all the sides. So we're going to press it in good. Make sure that we get it all over this thing really good so that it can do what it's supposed to do. There's one side. And we're going to do all sides, even the edges. Once we get the salt on here. You guys just look how thick that piece of steak is though. It's pretty, it's pretty thick guys. So no wonder I need so much salt, right? It's gonna take that much to really make a difference. I wanna salt this fat really good too so it good, renders down good. I'm sorry, renders down well. English heat structure will get on me for that. Now I will French this bone out a little bit better. I don't know if you can see there, there's some meat on there. I want to French that off there and get that off so it won't be so messy. But Okay. I'll put some pepper on it. We'll do quite as much pepper right now. It doesn't really matter. We can do it tomorrow even, but while I've got it here, I'll put it on there. Now I will leave it open air in the fridge too. I won't even cover it up. but I want to make sure it's on a wire rack like this so the air gets underneath it too. And that's, that's a big help too, to make sure you have good air. And I could use some olive oil for a binder if I wanted to, but it's sticking pretty good here. Even though it's pretty chilly out here, it's, it's doing okay. Not, not as well as I want it to, but doing okay. All right, guys, there we go. We'll put this in the fridge overnight. And get it to uh, brine that salt in and make it good and juicy. You'll see the difference tomorrow. All right, guys, we will be back, uh, like I say, probably mid-afternoon tomorrow. we got some, some rain coming tomorrow, so I have to deal with that. It's going to be probably afternoon, but we'll get a good 24 hours from now. This thing will brine the whole time. It'll look fantastic. We will see you guys right about now. Hey, guys, we're back. Told you it would be just a second. I know that's kind of cheesy, I'm sorry. But anyway, we're back with our uh, tomahawk ribeye. We've got the slow and sear going. We're not gonna really use it as a slow and sear this time. We're gonna use it as a second zone for two zone cooking. We've got the heat going strong. Charcoals are red hot. We're gonna put the steak, the ribeye over on this side while that cooks and causes us some serious heat within the, within the kettle. We don't really care what the ambient temperature is, is in the kettle. All we care about is what the interior, in, internal temperature of the steak becomes and we want to make sure we've got our we got our temp spike in here. We're looking for 125 internal uh, to get us where we want to go. Our eventual is to go medium rare to closer to medium, uh, but medium rare to medium, and that's what we want to get to. So we'll get this on. Now we dry brined it last night. You'll notice how dark red the steak is. That's really what that dry brine does. It's really crisp and not crisp, but very dry, which is what we want. Um, 
It makes a really good sear when we go to sear it too. So we're, we're excited about this thing and we will uh, we'll get it going here and see how it goes. We're going to put it on right here beside the, the fire. Um, we got the charcoals going, like I said. So we'll get this going and when we, uh, we get to 125, we'll, we'll probably rehash what we're going to do at that point. Hey guys, real quick, I wanted to clarify something I said a minute ago. I said that I don't really care what the ambient temperature inside the smoker, inside the kettle is. That's not exactly true. I meant when I compare it to smoking something. When I smoke something, it's low and slow for long term, a lot of hours, 12, 15, 16 hours. And we want to keep that at 225 or 250 typically. We're grilling a steak here, so we don't really care the temperature is going to be, you know, to get it exact. We don't want it 600 degrees yet. We're, we're cooking it and, and more or less making an oven out of our kettle. So 350, 400 degrees is fine. I think it's at 350 right now, and I'm fine with that. We will take it to 85 degrees, and we'll turn the steak over, and then we'll take the 85 degrees and go to 125. When we get to 125, we'll take the steak off. We'll let it rest. While it's resting, we'll throw some new charcoal onto the slow and sear, get that flame built up really, really good, bring the steak back out, put it over top of the, the hot searing stay, uh, flames, so we'll sear each side for a couple minutes on each side. So that'll get us to our actual ultimate temperature of the high 130s up to 140, hopefully no more than 140. Um, but you know, we'll get a little carryover cooking once we take it in and let it rest. It'll go from 125 to probably 130, 132 maybe, and then we'll, the rest of the way we'll get to closer to 140 when we sear it. So we will, we'll, do, we'll show you all that when we get to that point and we'll go from there. Okay guys, we've hit the 85 degree internal temperature mark. We're gonna go ahead and take it out and turn it over. Take a look at it here. Hope you can see that good. Looking like it's doing really, really well. We want to try to keep that fat side towards the fire because it kind of protects it a little bit. Boy, it's looking really good. Feeling good. Oh man, it looks really, really good. Fat's rendering really well. Get some good caramelization on the edges here where we want it to, and this fat will render out really well now. So. We'll leave it there till we get to 125, guys. All right, guys, we reached the magic 125. Time to take it off. Oh, my goodness, it looks so good. Let's see how it looks here. That looks fantastic, guys. Hope you can see that good from where you're at. I'm really pleased with the way it looks. Good caramelization here. We've not even seared this thing yet. It looks fantastic. So we'll let it rest for 10 or 15 minutes. We'll bring some new charcoal out, put some more charcoal on top of the slow and sear, get it good and hot again, get it good and flaming up. Bring our tomahawk back out, put over top of that slow and sear where it's going to get some real good flame to it and sear both sides for a couple minutes. Then we'll cut into it and see how we did. All right, gang, we reached the one, magic 125. We have got the steak completed. We pulled, a, uh, pulled it out at 125, but the carryover temperature actually took it to 133, which was about what I thought it would do. We're going to now take it and put it over top of these hot, I'll put some more charcoals on the flame on the slow and sear. We've got some good flame going. We'll take our steak and we'll go ahead and bring in closer so you can see this. We got that good flame going there. We'll put the steak down on the uh, on the flame. You hear it sizzle there. We got oh, that's some good sear there. We'll go a couple minutes each side and we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, hopefully, we'll, we'll both sides will look really good when we get done. We'll have some good char on there. Okay, guys, we've been on two minutes now. I'll take it off and let you look at it here. Uh, see our char really good. On, oh, how good does that look? Got some really good sear there. We'll put the other side down now. Let it go for a couple minutes, and then we'll take it off and get right into it. We'll be back. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to cut it off the bone, take a bite, and see how we did. Let's see. I'm just going to trace this bone down as I cut off. We'll stay right along the edge of it. Oh, it's be some good eating there, too. So let's just cut this thing open and see how we did. We'll cut it right across the middle here and see how we did. Oh my gosh, that's so tender. Magic reveal. Look at there, guys. A little more than medium. I mean, a little more than medium rare, closer to medium, which is what my family likes. Not me, but my family. So that's fine. My daughter, she's smart. She likes medium rare as well. But we'll take a little bite here and see how it goes. Let's see if it's... Let's see if I can avoid taking too big a bite. I'll just take too big a bite because I'm excited. Looks really good. Let's take a bite here and see. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Mm. Guys, that is fantastic. That's why you cook a tomahawk rib out right there. Salt and pepper only. Using a little charcoal on the slow and sear. Got to 125. Took it to 133 on the carryover. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
That's fantastic. So juicy, so tender. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys will do one of these. I pray you'll do one of these because it is absolutely life changing. It's phenomenal. It's really, really, not life changing, but it's really, really good. I think you'll really like it. By all means, if you get a chance to do one of these, do it for sure. Uh, again, uh, Tomahawk Ribeye, three pound prime, fantastic. Guys, we're not sure what we're going to do next, but I'll tell you what we will do. We'll see you at the smoker.